<laughs> if we're in a cold garage, the washing machine is working in the background, and this is sitting in front. What do you think we're up to? What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel Anderson, and welcome to another cold video working on the cars. We need to take care of the radiator on our ML55 here. Everything is covered in leaves out here and we're still in the middle of the manual swap on the C55 and the garage looks like it. So it's not coming in the garage and anyways, it's probably gonna make a mess when I pull the coolant outs and all that stuff. So we're gonna get it done out here. Now, there's a handful of videos on these. Shout out to my buddy Michael and Hey Boys Garage. Also another ML55 owner that has done this job and made a pretty good video on it. So you guys should check that out. Uh, and then there's also a handful like W163 ML500 videos that people have done really good radiator videos on. You can see the elements I'm going to be working in here, so I'm not going to set up all my lights and do all this and that. I'm just going to show you guys the basics as we go through. And the cool thing is we're trying out something new. I have an all aluminum radiator that I will show you guys once it's time. But first, we need to get our old radiator out of here. And why am I replacing it? It basically is weeping from the crimps on the driver's side. It's not like been bad, it's, we, it was still totally drivable, it was just weeping and it's losing everything out of the expansion tank after like a day basically. So pretty good leak, um, luckily didn't leave a strand anywhere, it wasn't you know chaotic or anything like that, it's just, it's time, 180,000 on this thing right now and uh, yeah, plastic crimps on the end of a radiator don't last forever. So we're gonna get it out and I'll show you guys anything important along the way. All right guys, a so quick documentation of what we're gonna to need to be doing here. Need to get our little front support off. What the heck? Oh, that's from me messing around with the catch can. I forgot to take that out. Anyways, uh, these are all 14 millimeter, or 13 millimeter, sorry, 13 millimeter bolts, so there's four on each side. On the regular 163s, you can actually get this out uh, using a wrench at the bottom ones without taking the headlights on. On the LMO55, you have to take the headlights off, which is actually super easy. Little clips over here hold in the little trim on the bottom, and then there's 10 millimeter nut, 10 millimeter nut, 10 millimeter bolts. Same thing on this side. So we'll sneak those out of there, unplug them, get them out of the way, and then we can have more room to get to our bolts here. And of course, it just started raining. So, uh, I'm gonna try to get this done. The goal is tonight to get this ripped out of here, and uh, tomorrow morning I'll get the new one in in a little bit of daylight. Uh, besides that, this is where it's weaving from on this side. We're gonna need to get our condenser out, which honestly, guys, this car's AC is not working great, and I'm thinking about just ditching our condenser and our, uh, uh, what's it called? All, all this setup in the front. Anything AC related, I might just delete while I'm in here because we're gonna need to take it out. Anyways, so the only reason I'm thinking about leaving it in place is because it is, you know, it does provide a little bit of protection for the radiator. You can see gouges here. So, anyways, that might be why we're not holding free on actually. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I end up doing. Let's get into it. All right guys, headlights are undone. I'm just gonna leave them basically sitting there because we just need to get those last bolts out and then I'll just tuck them back in, let them sit and get our front radiator support off. Let's do it. All right guys, quick update. What have we done so far? Just undid the AC line on this and this to get the condenser all the way out of the way. And guys, I'm pretty sure this thing was shot. Um, there was a lot of areas on it that just don't look great and when these got separated when i was pulling apart um, these little clips that are attached you can tell how corroded in between the fins they are so this thing if i was going to keep ac around um, probably needs to be replaced but we're not going to throw it in we're making this thing the ultimate reliable down and dirty machine so we haven't really used AC in it the last few years and don't need it now. So uh, in the summertime, we'll cruise the other cars if we really need AC for something, but uh, I'm pretty sure I have the belt for the AC bypass. I'm just gonna delete the compressor, like take it actually all the way off and I'll put the uh, shorter belt on it to just bypass it altogether. Just one less thing to go wrong. So 
um, why not make it a little more dependable than it already is so uh, eventually I'll delete these lines out of the way and stuff but for now not worried about it um, this needs to come off though and now that this line is out of the way it's a lot easier to access I think there's one uh, on each side I think they're like T or not T actually they're inverted torques that is so weird for that to be there that is a tiny one it's probably like a I don't know six millimeter or something socket that'll fit on there so I'll see what that is get that condenser off obviously that can be deleted now too um, and I'll see where that line snakes up into and eventually delete all that so uh, next up I already pulled these off there's little uh, attachment um, little ring grommets or whatever you call them that are onto those so I think this rubber piece can come out now uh, let's see it's kind of old and stiff so it doesn't come out very easy there we go and I'm not sure how important these are to have on I'm sure they're doing a little bit keeping the flow from going just right past it so I'll keep them I could always make my own too just out of some either like I don't know rubber material or thin aluminum something but anyways I'll keep them around they're still in decent shape so those will be kept for down the road when I get this back together uh, and next up we needed to unhook our battery and then undo our fan here and we'll start to uh, get all those clips off I think there's I don't know a few bolts in here that need to get done and then there's some clips on the bottom that are holding the fan in place so I'll update you guys as we go all right, you guys, well, I got the bottom cracked. Don't judge me, this is mostly water, water in here right now because we filled it up a few times, but anyways, I'm letting that all drain out slowly from the bottom because uh, otherwise you gotta rip the hose off and it's just gonna be a mess, so I'm gonna let it trickle out. Uh, besides that, what else have I done while well, I've been off the camera with you guys? Got the cables undone for the fan, uh, and then there's three little clips on the bottom of the fan and two 10 millimeter bolts on each side. So like I said, just letting that drain, and then after that, I'll need to undo uh, the trans banjo bolt and the other trans connector down at the bottom. And then I have one more uh, power steering line still attached to a barb, and then the condenser, like I said, gotta get that off still. So uh, let's go ahead and take those two off while we're waiting for this to drain. All right, you guys, she's almost home free. She's got the fan out. Uh, don't forget, at the bottom, after you take those little 10 millimeter bolts out, there are some little retaining clips um, to keep those screws in there. Anyways, original fan right here, putting in work for a long time. Uh, I don't think they make these anymore, like from Mercedes. There might be some aftermarket options, but anyways, a radiator is almost out. Um, got the uh, lines off for the trans. It's pretty funny, actually. Tool I never use. Uh, the Mercedes-Benz spark plug tool uh, just happened to be the right size. I don't know where I put it, <laughs> but uh, super funny. It's like a odd-shaped wrench, um, and it just happened to fit that bottom line. So I think it's like a 15 mil or 16 mil, maybe. Um, and then this is a 19, and don't forget your little washers that go on each side of the banjo bolt. Uh, I need to get these two lines off this one I got the clamp undone I just need to wiggle it off and then the lower one which must be the power steering um, actually I don't know yeah uh, yeah that must be to the actual rack so after we get done with this we're gonna need to fill up a little bit of trans fluid and a little bit of power steering fluid because the radiator is gonna be holding uh, some so we'll need to replenish what we take out but Anyways, let me undo that real quick. Hopefully it doesn't cause too much of a mess. And that should be the last two things we gotta do before we rip this thing out of here. And condenser, keep forgetting about that thing. All right, you guys, radiator is almost home free. Go ahead and set you guys up and uh, see this thing get pulled out.
right, you guys. Let me get the sensor light on back here, but a whole lot of room for activities now. Um, nice to see our crankshaft rubber is still looking pretty good. Um, I'm definitely going to take the opportunity to scrub and power wash all of this because uh, previously when this was still leaking, um, I just had a ton of oil going everywhere and it's really old caked on stuff and this is kind of the best time to get all this out of here. So I'm definitely going to be cleaning. Um, I might change these silicone hoses. I have uh, black ones that I could put on. I was saving them for the C55, but I might put them on. And to be honest, I've also thought about just putting OEM hoses back on because this one has kind of been annoying. The bottom one has been fine for the most part, but it does have a little bit of contact it's making with the uh, trans lines. Um, power steering is definitely leaking out of the rack line, so uh, I'm sure I'm gonna need to do uh, power, steering, power steering fluid um, added when I get done with all this, so. But yeah, for the most part, it wasn't too bad. I mean, a lot of little things you gotta take off, but not too bad and easier for me because I'm not reusing any of this AC stuff, so. Uh, I'll probably put the belt on, the shorter belt as well, when I'm um, going back to put everything back together after I get it cleaned off. I'll take the belt off before I go to clean, scrub all this down, get it all nice and shiny and fresh. And yeah, this will be a nice opportunity to do this. So tomorrow morning, once it's daylight and I'm not getting rained on, hopefully, uh, even if I am, doesn't matter. I'll get this cleaned up and we'll get our new unit in there. All right, just soft bolted the radiator support on. So just to keep this closed, it's gonna be raining all night. I don't want the engine bay getting all covered in water. So let's uh, catch you guys in the morning. Parkour! <clears throat> all right, guys, we're back. It's the next day. Got some warmth, a little bit, and uh, daylight at least. So we need to get this thing scrubbed up. It is all kinds of nasty on the front of this, so I might as well take advantage of the clearest view I'm gonna have of the front of the engine here and uh, yeah, just take care of business. So I am gonna get the belt off real quick and I think I'm gonna try to get the compressor off first. The front bolts are easy to get to. The back one shouldn't be too bad, hopefully. Um, and yeah, slide that thing off. I'll keep it as a spare because the compressor is still good. Uh, I'm assuming it's just the rest of the components were leaking somewhere. And we're just making this thing just down and dirty, reliable, and we don't use AC enough to warrant trying to fix the system. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna delete it. I think I got the bypass belt here anyways, and uh, get this job done. All right, you guys, compressor is out. Three bolts uh, weren't too hard to do there. Um, and then I just tucked the lines basically, so big line is tucked back there, not going to go anywhere, and the smaller line for the condenser is tucked right there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, hit this with like, I don't know, some simple green or purple power, scrub it up a little bit, and then see how much pressure washer will take off. Not concerned about getting it spotless, but at least it'll be better than what it's at right now. Here's our old original Denzo compressor and our condenser. I'll keep these just because I know they're still good, and it's good to have a backup for the other cars um, so we'll see but belt that you need if you're gonna do this is uh, PK 2310 I believe uh, yeah 6 piece K 6 PK 2310 or 4060910 this is a continental belt that's what I did on the C55 when I was experimenting uh, how to bypass AC uh, still haven't deleted AC on that car just because you know don't know if I want to for sure yet but um, this car we don't need it it's our summer cruiser and we just roll with the windows down so <laughs> luckily it doesn't get too scorching hot up here too often um, so we'll be okay but uh, yeah time to clean and get everything buttoned back up all right you guys she's like a whole new engine <laughs> I mean probably the cleanest it's ever been since it's left, left the factory uh, it's not factory fresh by any means, but heck of a lot cleaner than it was before. I uh, went ahead and uh, used the vacuum on reverse just to blow out all the big spots of water that were left over after pressure washing it. Also cleaned up the top of our ABS right there real quick and just all this little crud on the side. 
just getting rid of a lot of leftover residue from old leaks and all types of stuff so this way I can keep an eye on things a lot better now and uh, keep up if I do see anything leaking so covered up my trans lines with gloves as well as our power steering line so those didn't get any water in them and besides that I think we're ready to put our belt back on and start trying to figure out uh, putting our aluminum radiator in and sorry guys I'm trying to get this done quick so I'm not really videoing all the stuff that's uh, involved in this it's just the way it is right now I'm trying to get this done all right guys belt is on nice and snug fit should be good to move on I put a little bit of a rust reformer spray on the crank pulley just to keep it from you know suffering any corrosion uh, but like I said earlier the rubber looks good on it uh, eventually I'll have to change it someday but um, for now I think she's still good to keep on trucking so I think it's time for our radiator placement um, and now that we got the AC stuff deleted, it's gonna be a lot less complicated, which is cool. So, let's move on. All right guys, and here is our radiator. This is the top side. Um, already comes with the little barbs. I just need to tighten these down. They're a compression fitting, basically. Uh, breather for the coolant, your lines for your transmission. And, oh, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look right. That should be down there. That might be a problem, guys. <laughs> Unless we're... No, we're looking at the right side. That's not good. That's not good. Hold on. Well, guys, you win some, you temporarily lose some. Damn, I was so excited to get this thing back together. I want to drive it and just have it available for my wife and son, but there's nothing I can do about this. They for sure put the fittings in the wrong size. I was just looking at the pictures, the ones I ordered, those are supposed to be swapped. I don't know if certain models maybe had them swapped from factory, maybe ML320s or whatever, but uh, every listing I see, 1998, 2002, ML320, ML350, or I mean, yeah, 350, 430, uh, 500, all should be the same um, it should have those flipped so I'm not really sure what the case is here um, there is no way I mean it would just spend so much time going to a hydraulic shop they're not even open when I'm available they're always uh, like their hours are limited and I'm always at work when they're open so trying to figure that out would be a complete hassle uh, so I'm talking to the eBay seller now hopefully they can get a refund for this one and I don't know, keep it around for something else or just send it back to them uh, and try to get the right one either from another seller or maybe this is just a mistake and they'll send the right one, but duh, man, so frustrating. All ready to go. I mean, I'm happy I got everything done, so it's just throwing it back in, but just annoying. We could have had the car ready today, but instead it's got to sit and uh, wait for the other one to show up, so. Looks like other ones that are available that from the pictures are supposed to be the right ones. Could be here as soon as like December 7th or so. It's December 2nd today, but aye, aye, aye. Anyways, ah, I'll check back with you guys when I got a solution. All right, you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to our radiator video on the M155. Well, not welcome back to you guys. You were already watching it, but welcome back to me. It's been a few days. Uh, we finally got our replacement factory style radiator. It's a TYC, and from my research, TYC radiators are typically made by Coil Rad, which is why I was comfortable going with it. And TYC has been great for everything I've ever ordered from them. So uh, I just measured it up. Width is exactly the same. Uh, height is exactly the same. I think it's 22 and a quarter for height, about 28 and a quarter for width, and then there's a little bit of difference in the thickness of the cores. The factory one is about an inch and a half. This one is about an inch and a quarter. I don't think it's going to make a big difference. And to be honest, there's a bunch of updated part numbers, so I don't know if that's something that got changed on the later ML55s, anyways. Plus, we're not going to have the condenser in front of it anymore. So I really don't think it's gonna be a factor in cooling things at all, um, in my opinion. So I'm happy with it, it's gonna do the job. Our aluminum radiator, I've talked to a buddy, shout out to Patrick. Um, one, actually, we got the 190E from, 
uh, he does a lot of welding and fabrication and I asked him about you know if he could help me out with swapping the fittings over here or figuring something out and he said uh, he would be glad to help me out I just gotta get the time and coordinate exactly when and how we'll do it so if I can get this one situated we could try it at a later date I'm not too concerned with it to be honest uh, but it does suck because the eBay seller is being a jerk and doesn't want to like refund or return or anything because I don't know he claimed I message him all the stuff all the details like hey the fittings are in the wrong locations this is not the same as the picture not the same as what it's supposed to be specified to fit it's supposed to fit all mls and it doesn't so he basically said oh it's aftermarket sometimes it requires a little bit of modification that's not a little bit of modification you think the typical diyer is going to fab up aluminum fittings is just crazy like i might be able to figure out how to do it but a regular person that just ordered this hoping to fit a radiator there there's no way so it's just that's a super jerk mentality shame on that seller um and yeah we'll see if we figure it out i did file a claim with ebay so hopefully they help me out with something but otherwise i mean i'll hang on to it see what we can do with it but that's it i'm gonna get this thing popped in uh it's wet and rainy again and dark just like last time so i'm basically gonna throw this thing in get all of our lines hooked up uh, i don't have the coolant i want to run right now i do have the blue european stuff but i just run the pre-stone yellow in this car just because yellow is what it came with from factory and uh it's easy and cheap to get readily available anywhere so i typically just try to stick with that stuff i am going to stick with my red silicone hoses i do have to replace one of the power steering lines because it was stuck to the old fitting and i'll have to throw in some power steering fluid and a little bit of trans fluid i'm sure uh, maybe just a drop of trans fluid or i'll just i might have that just wait because i got a service of trans anyways coming up so let me get this radiator in while this thing is uh open and uh ready to go it's pouring rain so let's get on it and at this point for safe measure i want to check everything so i just test fit the fan and it looks like it's going to slide into all the grooves just easy and fine so we're good let's keep going all right you guys another late night but i finally finished the install it looks like um everything is plugged in uh, i would have liked to be honest to grab some hoses but i just couldn't get any here in time and the ones that they wanted locally is crazy even for like a euro branded upper hose locally they wanted 95 dollars that same hose is 19 dollars on rock auto so uh, i do not understand that but i just didn't feel like waiting around I adjusted this one I just kind of like angled it over so we got enough clearance from our fan and then I had this on before just to protect it from a little uh, whatever engine cover and from the oil cooler just so they don't rub or if they do it's not going to do anything the bottom hose has always kind of contacted the trans lines but it's never really been an issue it's not rubbing through because those are kind of soft metal pieces no hard edges um, we got this on with the new washer and our compression fitting all tucked down there. And then our two power steering lines also um, tightened up. Battery uh, negative and positive over here and our little connector put back, our little plastic cover. Um, besides that, I need to uh, take our headlights or move them out of the side, get our core support bolted down all the way. It just has one bolt in it right now on each side. And then from there, fill up coolant Philip power steering. I'll have to check the transmission fluid um, and see what the level's at. I'm sure it didn't lose a whole lot because um, not a lot came out of the radiator, to be honest. Uh, but maybe, I don't know, a quarter of a quart, half a quart. I don't know what these really hold um, capacity wise, but it, it can't be too much with just that side. But, anyways, guys, um, yeah, let me finish this up and we'll get our fluids in. And fired up all right guys now we're actually buttoned up headlights back on I didn't uh, get too picky with my fitment you can adjust them a little bit to get these bars to sit you know super flush underneath but I didn't go crazy with it right now to be honest just getting them done uh, I think we're ready to add fluids and yeah I'm just using peak whatever just regular yellow coolant that's what i've been using in this either xerox or this and then for power steering fluid um, i'm grabbing lube guard synthetic and uh, that can pretty much be used 
in anything and I had really good luck with the loop guard fluid that I used in the ML63 um, made the power steering pump live longer than I think it was going to um, so anyways I'm gonna add that in here I gotta make sure this radiator is good so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time yet until I know that it's good and then I will uh, think about those hoses and better fluid later on but anyways it'll do the job let me go ahead fill things up and we'll do our test fire all right you guys fluid is being added pretty amazing these m113s how they bleed themselves even when the car is off things literally just burping itself so i'm gonna wait till that gets done put another gallon in uh, and then i'm adding power steering fluid i'll need to turn the car on obviously and cycle it but i'm just trying to make sure i got enough in that it's not gonna suck it all down and get air in the system so um yeah all right guys i think we are ready for test fire uh, i'll have to run back up to the front after we start it up just to check if the coolant gets sucked down but it did bleed itself quite a bit i have almost two and a half gallons in there uh and then our power steering will obviously need to cycle it that i'm going to check right away when i start it and kind of run back and see how much it sucked down so i will have this ready <clears throat> and honestly put a little more before I start it alright guys let's go for it I'm sorry it's so dark but hey it's the way it is this thing it's probably got condensation in the cluster yes it does you can see the little sparkles there on the numbers that happens if we don't drive it for a long time just moisture getting into the cluster but anyways on high yeah, should be good to go okay, BAS and ESP probably because I had the battery disconnected Let's go check the power steering fluid so I can cycle it now. Alright, let me cycle the wheel a few times. There we go, BAS ESP light went off. It's probably just because I had the battery disconnected. Let's go check the fluid level for the power steering. All right, guys. Well, we're officially buttoned up. I'm gonna go take this thing for a cruise. I'll bring you guys along. Uh, but yeah, everything seems to be running smooth. Uh, double checked underneath, no leaks, anything. Uh, but we got to get it up to temp fully and uh, make sure our heat comes on, everything like that. And then double check our fluids once we get back. All right, you guys. Sorry the heat is loud, but I'm freezing, and honestly, it feels great, so I'm keeping it on. Uh, but yeah, we're just about up to temp. Car is driving great, steering feels great. Uh, and like I said, heat's blowing nice and hot, so it's warming up my freezing hands from working out there and finishing it up outside in the cold. And uh, I'll check back with you guys in a second once I pull up to the garage. All right, you guys. I've been sitting here idling for a good probably 10 minutes. Sitting dead even. It's kind of where it always runs kind of where it always ran typically, um, right about 90. It'll fluctuate between uh, you know, 90 and just under 100, uh, it's kind of typical. So these for whatever reason, I don't know, the ML55s are kind of known for doing that. Uh, my CV-55 never, like it just sits at 90 all day long no matter what, but the ML55 is always kind of fluctuated. The older Mercedes do that too, like the 90s stuff, the M104s, M119s all do that. They kind of fluctuate up to 100. Uh, you can do mods on them to kick the fans on earlier, etc. But uh, C36 does that, my E420 did that, but um, yeah, should be good. Let's go take a look at the engine bay one last time and we'll close out the video. All right, you guys, well that will go ahead and do it for the ML55 radiator install. Um, I wanted to close out this video if you guys saw um, Wednesday's video and yesterday's short that I put out on the Mars Red C55 um, and the unfortunate you know, mistake I made um, putting the transmission on, I just wanted to say 
like genuinely a huge thank you to you guys. Uh, there were so many of you, positive words, encouragement, messages to me, comments, etc. And honestly, um, like it really felt good to know you guys were <laughs> just so supportive and um, you know just encouraging me to keep going. Um, in that moment, like I want to, I want to preface this of what I'm going to say by like I'm, I'm totally fine. I'm 100% fine, and this is this is like a tiny, tiny, tiny grain of sand in the grand scheme of things. You know, working on cars in general, cars in general, compared to life and everything I have in my life, my wife, my son, my family, my friends, like those are the things, those are the things that, that mean something, like truly mean something. Cars, I love them, don't get me wrong, and I'm blessed to have all these things and these machines that I have are amazing and I love them. I love wrenching on them. I love experiencing them. I love sharing everything with you guys. Like that is all amazing, but it is nothing in, in comparison to real life, you know, like, like real, real things. So preface all of what I'm about to say about that. I don't want to come off like I'm complaining or ungrateful or anything, but I will be honest with you guys in the moment of making that mistake, uh, the transmission and seeing the <laughs> upper oil pan crack on the C55 behind me, it was like crushing just because we were right there. We were so close to having this thing done. It was an embarrassing mistake with all the experience that I have now. And it, I mean, this is my third manual swap. Um, it was just embarrassing for me in that moment. Like, damn, I really made that mistake. Like that one <laughs> out of everything, like that one. And I don't know, I, I don't try to live with an ego at all. So I don't, I don't think it's really for that. It's, it's more like I'm pretty hard on myself. I'm very competitive and mostly just with myself, to be honest, like, and I, it's a, it's a, blade of two sides like it gets me to where i'm at but it also can uh be harsh you know like to deal with at times just because i'm so <laughs> um focused on you know self-control and um kind of improvement and getting better and I literally could not sleep last night. This it's it's Thursday right now. The transmission incident happened Tuesday night. Wednesday I was so like depleted that I just like sacked out, but yesterday after you know having a whole day to chew on it, I could not sleep last night. I was just sitting there in bed replaying it over and over and over and over in my head and just it just like you just churn because you're just like, man, I would give anything to just go back. Not anything, but I would love to turn back the hands of time to Tuesday night and just redo the whole scenario. And straight up with you guys, like straight up honesty, I knew we should have we should have backed off. We should have pulled the transmission back down. It just it was going okay, but it just wasn't quite right. And I knew it. And we just, that's the thing that drives me nuts is like, I knew it and I didn't listen to my gut instinct. And I, I try to always do that. I'd always try to trust my gut, always try to go with the flow. And I knew it and I ignored it and I paid that consequence for it. Now, all of that said, who gives a shit? I'm gonna fix it. It's going to be better than it was, and whatever we have to do to fix it, whether drop the subframe, pull the motor, I don't care. I'm going to do it, and I'm excited. It's a learning opportunity. I will figure out exactly what went wrong with the install um, and go from there. I mean, there's nothing else I can do. There's no point 
crying about it like I already feel better that was me reminiscing on my feelings of kind of yesterday and the moment and all that stuff but right now I feel good some of you guys were telling me like just take a break step away from the cars and honestly the first thing I did the first thing I did when I got a chance yesterday after Maze went to sleep came out in the garage I organized a bunch of stuff got things cleaned up and then I started wrenching on the ML55 so I could finish up this video and have it ready for tomorrow, Friday. Like I said, Thursday night right now. So um, I'm just a busy bee by nature and that's, that's how I do all of this, to be honest. Like I'm a night owl. I am constantly busy. I'm ADHD for sure. <laughs> like. I'm always doing something, always doing something, always doing something, and it's a gift and a curse. But it's a gift much more than a curse, and when you know how to use it, it is a gift and a blessing by far over anything else. So I'm thankful. I have the energy I have. I have the friends and the family that I have. I have all of you who I consider friends in my like community, a community together that we've built in this channel. Um, and it's just a lot of love like when something like this happens and then you you feel the support and the love from others that's all you can feel like i just feel a lot of love and i'm very thankful for that and it feels good to know that that's there um always not just in the bad times but like the good times too and um everything collectively is for a reason and for whatever reason, like this was in the cards, but um, comes down to it, like wh whatever beliefs you have, whatever, you know, things you follow or believe in, you know, there's things in many different beliefs and cultures and religions of, you know, the universe, the gods, the God only hands you things that they know you can overcome or, you know, surpass. Um, so whatever reason this was in the cards, it's okay. like. I'm going to get through it. We're going to make this car as good as it's ever been. And I'm excited. The excitement went down the drain for about 10 minutes when this happened. But it came back. It started building back pretty quickly. And, um, you know, who cares? Uh, we're going to get it Going to get it done. So that's it, guys. Um, thank you guys for the support. Uh, this is at the end of this video just because it's the next video after that happened. So if you've stuck around to hear me talk, <laughs> thank you guys. And uh, for those that maybe skipped around, I hope you got some help from the ML55 radiator situation. Um, I will be working with a buddy to, uh, Patrick, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I think, to try to get the right fittings on there. Um, the eBay seller is still being an absolute jerk, so... I don't know, that's on them. I can't really control any of that. So, um, yeah, I'll keep it around. Who knows? Um, that's also something with this project down, uh, we are, I, I am going to tackle as many things as I can on the car that I know need to be done uh, while it is down. Like, the bumpers need to be painted. I don't know if that's something that I'm going to try to do, but that's the thing that needs to be done. The headlights need to be restored. Um, I'd love to do an aluminum radiator on this car because I just found one that I think will fit. Um, and I'm talking with the seller right now to see if they'd be willing to send it out to do a video on it. So we'll see. It depends. Like if the motor comes out, there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to do as a while you're in there. And if we drop the subframe, then it's really just going to be get the pan on, swap things out and get a button back up. So we'll see which way we go. Um, I've been talking to different people with different experience. Most people that I've talked to that I know have a lot of experience, just say pull the motor. Um, uh, so some people say like if I have a lift, subframe would be good, but doing the oil pan on my back, I don't know how enjoyable that would be. So um, other things besides that, like interior, I need a headliner. Um, my plan kind of with that though is I'm deleting a lot of the interior on the silver C55. So I thought I could just swap the good one from that car onto this car, take this one and rewrap it and modify it because I'm going to end up deleting the sunroof on the silver C55. So I thought about doing that even though it's kind of doing the job twice which is probably a nightmare but oh well. 
Um, yeah, and besides that, I mean, there's not much else I can do until it's off the race ramps. I need to do brakes, need to check suspension, all this different stuff. But uh, just take it in stride. So thank you guys again. Thank you as always. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for all the messages. Thank you for the kind words, the encouragement, the love, and the motivation. I'll be back. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.